This video is for educational purpose only. Assalamu alaikum everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about lithium in bipolar disorder and how it works in this condition. So first of all, so uh, there is a pathway, uh, in acidol uh, pathway. So what actually happened that uh, lithium inhibit inositol monophosphate uh, phosphatase. So inositol monophosphatase is an enzyme which is being inhibited by lithium and other important enzymes which are also included in uh, this cycle. So uh, what actually happened is that uh, we have IP2 that is inositol diphosphate over here. This is being converted into IP1, that is inositol monophosphate. This conversion is actually being inhibited by lithium. And similarly, in the next step of the cycle, that is IP1, that is inositol monophosphate being converted into inositol is also being inhibited by this lithium. So both of these uh, steps are being halted by uh, lithium. <clears throat> and in this way, there will be a reduction in next uh, products of the site. So <clears throat> this block leads to a depletion of free inositol. And ultimately, uh, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate that IP, uh, sorry, PIP2. So this is also inhibited and this uh, thing is actually precursor of ip3 and dhg which is important for uh, different functions so over time the effects of transmitters on the cell diminish in proportion to the amount of activity in pip2 dependent pathways so what actually happened that there will be reduction in the amount of activity because of inhibition or diminishing uh, effects being caused by lithium. So the activity of these pathways is postulated to be markedly increased during a manic episode. So when a patient who is bipolar, uh, he has his um, manic and depressive episodes. So in manic episode, these pathways are remarkably uh, increased or they are uh, very active. So what lithium does is that it reduces it to uh, a normal level. So in this way, it will help uh, the patient with that manic episode. So so let's discuss it again from the diagram. So effect of lithium on IP3, that is an acetyl triphosphate and DAG, that is diacyglycerol. Both of these are second messenger molecules and they have, uh, because they have a certain role uh, to play. And the symmetric uh, diagram shows the synaptic membrane of a neuron. So it is a synaptic membrane of a neuron. And over here, uh, the author has um, told us about the uh, abbreviation. PI is inorganic phosphate. PIP2 is phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. So over here, there are actually two phosphates which are attached to uh, attached uh, at four and five position. And this one is phosphatidyl inositol four phosphate. Over here, uh, phosphate is only being attached to uh, being attached at the fourth position. Okay. And um, PLC is phospholipase C. NG is coupling protein affects activation of protein kinase C. So when these are being released, they have effect on protein kinase C and uh, 
uh, there will be certain roles being uh, played by them uh, and mobilization of intracellular uh, calcium. So lithium by inhibition of uh, these uh, substrate may cause the depletion of these second messenger molecules. So uh, PIP2, that is the precursor molecule for these two. So as lithium is uh, inhibiting this precursor molecule, ultimately there will be reduction in IP3 and DHG. Lithium may also act by other mechanisms and we will discuss those mechanisms later on. Studies of noradrenergic effects in isolated brain tissue indicate that lithium can inhibit norepinephrine sensitive adenyl cyclase. So adenyl cyclase is another pathway. Uh, so pathway which is sensitive to norepinephrine, which means norepinephrine being attached to the receptor of uh, that pathway can be inhibited by lithium. So such an effect could relate to both its antidepressive and antimenic activities or effects. The relationship of these effects to lithium actions on IP3 mechanism is currently unknown. So now we don't know what is the relationship of this mechanism that is adenyl cyclase inhibition mechanism to that of uh, what we have discussed previously in the previous slide. So because lithium affects second messenger systems involving both activation of adenyl cyclase and phosphoinositol turnover that we have discussed previously, it is not surprising that G proteins are also found to be affected. Obviously, if we are uh, going to be talking about some pathways which involve G protein, and in that pathway, lithium is doing uh, something or disturbing some pathway, obviously there will be disturb uh, disturbance in those G proteins as well. So he's saying it is not surprising. Several studies suggest that lithium may uncouple receptors from their G proteins. Indeed, two of lithium's most common side effects, polyuria and subclinical hypothyroidism may be due to uncoupling of vasopressin and thyroid stimulating hormone receptor from their G protein. So all he's saying is that uh, G proteins are also being disturbed uh, by the intake of lithium. So uh, when you take lithium, uh, it shows two common side effects, which is, which is polyuria, that means um, frequent urination or uh, a lot of uh, production of urine or subclinical hyperthyroidism, which means um, decrease in the functioning of thyroid gland. So both of these are occur or suggested to be occurred because of uh, uncoupling of vasopressin, which is being attached to a receptor, uh, but as their G proteins are being disturbed by lithium, now vasopressin cannot perform or show its function. So it, uh, it is being resulting into adverse effect, which is polyuria. Similarly, when thyroid stimulating hormone is being attached to its receptor, but their G couple proteins are being disturbed because of lithium. Now what will happen, there will be uh, not um, effective response of those hormones. So ultimately there will be subclinical hyperthyroidism which will act as side effect of, which will be actually shown as side effect of lithium. And over here, I have uh, attached a picture of adenyl cyclase. Um, there are different proteins which are being involved uh, in this cycle. Okay. The major current working hypothesis for lithium uh, therapeutic mechanism of action supposes that it affects on phosphoinositol turnover, leading to an early relative reduction of myoinositol in human brain. 
So what actually happened? It is supposed now it is not actually confirmed pathway or confirmed mechanism of action of lithium, but all of these are supposed or suggested because uh, because research is still being going on on this uh, drug for this particular disorder that is bipolar disorder. Because bipolar disorder itself hasn't been uh, studied that well until now. Anyways. So uh, it is supposed that when phosphoinositol uh, uh, pathway is being disturbed by lithium, this leads to early relative reduction of myoinositol in human brain. Myoinositol is being reduced in human brain and are part of an initiating cascade of intracellular changes. And now this myoinositol is actually part of several uh, intracellular changes for uh, it is very important for initiating those changes so it can affect in that way effects on specific isoform of protein kinase c may also be most relevant so as we know uh, ip3 and dha uh, cause different uh, effects on protein kinase C for intracellular responses. So as we know, those both of those things are being reduced. And when they are reduced, protein kinase C, uh, protein kinase C's effect is also being reduced. So alteration of protein kinase C mediated signaling alter gene expression and the production of protein implicating in long-term neoplastic events that could underlie long-term long -term mood stabilization. So all he's saying is that alteration of protein kinase C mediated signaling alter gene expression. So gene expression is being changed because of decrease in protein kinase C. And uh, production of proteins implicates in long-term neoplastic events. So there is new neoplastic events being going on because of the alteration of gene expression. So when there is gene expression, uh, uh, gene expression, there is production of proteins, and those proteins are actually helpful for mood stabilization uh, by uh, doing some neuroplastic events. Okay, so next we have is another pathway, which is supposed to be uh, to be effective in this um, disorder. Lithium also inhibit glycogen synthase kinase three, GSK three. Uh, now this is a multifunctional protein kinase. GSK3 is a uh, component of diverse intracellular signaling pathway. Now this um, protein is uh, multifunctional and it has several role in signaling pathways. So uh, there are different kind of signaling pathways um, in which this protein is being involved like uh, insulin yeah, uh, or insulin like growth factors, brain drive, neurotropic factors, and WNT pathway. So, lithium induced inhibition of GSK3 result in the reduction of phosphorylation of B uh, catenin. So, what actually has happened that lithium reduced the level of GSK3, which is multifunctional protein and involved in various signaling pathways. And when this protein is being decreased, there is reduction of phosphorylation of p catenin And this thing leads to increase in the accumulation or translocation of p catenin into the nucleus. So when there is increase in the level of b catenin beta catenin uh, in the nucleus, there will be more transcription of the proteins. 
the transcription process will be enhanced or facilitated by this process and pathways that are facilitated by accumulation of beta uh, catenin via gsk inhibition modulate energy metabolism provide neuroprotection and increase neuroplasticity so all of this will ultimately result into neuroprotection or increase in neuroplasticity so this is how uh, lithium works through different pathways uh, different known pathways so this is all about lithium for now uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more informational videos